Hey, I'm Troy Baker. So let's talk a little about uh, performance capture and how that's opened things up for you as an actor. I really think that performance capture, first of all, we've seen the tech really kind of evolve and I think that the process of how we capture those performances has had to evolve too. And it's fortunately kind of become like my bread and butter and it's something that I really, really enjoy because you get to take that character from soup to nuts. You get to see, you know, you help almost establish that character and work in tandem with the developer to really bring that character to life. What has it opened up from the perspective of being able to work opposite other actors on stage? It's, first of all, it's, it's finally bringing that, that true cinematic quality to the game space because you're no longer just isolated in this booth by yourself, but you're actually able to change your performance and adapt your performance based on the person that you're actually going to be finally in that scene with. So if I'm doing a scene with Nolan North or Jen Hale or Steve Bloom, um, it, now we have this opportunity to really kind of create something organic as opposed to just trying to guess at it. What impact do you think that's having on, on the success of games? I mean, we're, we're already seeing The Last of Us get critical acclaim unlike anything else out there, possibly up until uh, the Uncharted games. I, I think that we're standing on the shoulders of giants with Uncharted. Um, with what Uncharted did, even starting from Drake's Fortune all the way up to Drake's Deception, I mean, it became the benchmark for performance and storytelling and, and having a narrative that's involved in the gameplay and finding that marriage between the two of them. And I think that as performance capture increases and as, as uh, technology increases, like what we're doing with uh, Infamous Second Son, they're really, having the tech that was able to capture those facial nuances and, and creating that facial tech serves the game. It's not just something that's a, a, a toy for it, but it's actually something that helps to kind of play to the narrative so you can understand intention. And as we see that technology develop, I think you're gonna have to see performances really step up too. How has it impacted you working on Infamous Second Son, your first next-gen title? It's, uh, we, we know where that we have very lofty goals. We know that we have to hit here, and that, that creates, um, there, there's a greater fire under your ass, you know, in, a, in some ways, uh, because we want it to be the best possible. And now it's, it's great being able to trust the tech that we have, knowing that it's going to pick up, again, all those subtleties and all those nuances. But when you're a launch window title, you know, this is what everyone's been looking for. And so far, what we've been seeing on the floor here, everyone's ready for these next gen consoles. What was it like stepping into the role of the Joker for Batman? Scary, sweaty palms, uh, shaking hands. It, it, was, it, was a, it was a huge honor and one that I did. Uh, that I approached very, very hesitantly because Mark Hamill is my Joker. And we've seen, you know, everyone from Cesar Romano to Jack Nicholson to Heath Ledger play the Joker and Mark Hamill included. So what am I gonna bring to that? Nothing, you know, it's been done so well. So all I'm simply trying to do is just pay homage to the character. And, and what I want people to see is the character and not me. You like to play games uh, yourself. So what's it like constantly, or playing through a game that you're hearing yourself in? I'm a huge gamer, and so being able to, I always say this, being able to be a part of something or make something that you're gonna geek out over later is probably the best perk of the job. Um, but it gives me a little bit of a different perspective than what some actors um, that don't play games, which is nothing wrong with it, but I, I'm a gamer, so I, I know that when, I'm, when I'm, we're making this and we're processing through this, that this may be a point that I'm like, I don't, this is where I don't typically get frustrated as a gamer. So what I try to do is try to avoid those pitfalls. And it helps me understand the game space, you know, the, 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 the arena that we're trying to operate in so that I can actually take that knowledge as a gamer and apply it to being an actor. And as a gamer, what's it like being here at E3 and what, what stood out for you? Man, I mean, the press conferences kind of set the tone. Um, and you see this, you know, knife fight between the consoles now. And it's really cool because the last two years at E3, we've seen people talking about and looking to the horizon as far as what next-gen games are gonna look like. And this is the first year that we've really been able to see the, the products of all that, of that hard work. So I'm excited to just kind of go booth to booth and see what people have been working on for the last two years in, in anticipation of the new consoles. Now, where would you like The Last of Us to go next? It's interesting because, I mean, we're talking with Neil Druckmann and Bruce Straley, I mean, they've really told the story that they want to tell. And there's always the possibility of doing something further with it, and it would be good. But what I love is that they have the commitment to this story enough to say, if we have a franchise, great. But what we really want to do is tell this story. And the world is so huge, and there's so many characters, even the characters that you see briefly in the game. There's, I mean, you could do backstory for, you could do three games just off of the, the ancillary characters like Tess and Marlene. So. Um, I, I don't know, I would love for it to continue because as a gamer, I'm, I'm excited to play more of it. Um, but I guess we'll just have to see.